All right, guys, we're going to be doing the next Earthlings Pet Answers. And as you can see here, I have the printout from Earthlings Pet Answers number seven. So I'm going to be going through these, reading them, and answering them. And in the bedroom here where we have my new uh, Pixie Bob cat, he'll probably jump up and down as we go through the video here. So let's go ahead and start it. I'm going to start actually from the last page because that is the oldest question. And I'll just go through it. we got about five pages, a good amount of questions, but not all that many. I think about 30 or 40. Which bird is better for an apartment, a budgie or a cockatiel? Well, yes, a budgie's smaller, so technically it's better in a smaller space. But then again, they're both okay in apartments. Cockatiel's not that big, and you should really get the bird that you want. Budgies aren't going to talk as much. They're not going to be quite as bonding, but I had an awesome budgie for 15 years that sat on my shoulder, did tricks, was awesome. So budgies can be great. You've got to spend a lot of time with either bird, but I'd say go with the bird you want. An apartment's big enough for either of them and both of them should have a lot of human interaction time. Alright, that just had a response on that one. Next question here is, hey Dread. Oh yeah, his name is the Dread Pirate Roberts. <laughs> so, oh, you cannot drink my drink. He tries to steal every drink. Can't drink my drink, oh what? Alright, next question. Are ferrets easy to care for and can, make, and can you make more ferret videos? I might make some more informational ferret videos. Are they easy to care for? Simple answer is no. Um, it's kind of like having a cat that's stuck in kitten stage. Like my kitten here, always active, always jumping around, always got to keep an eye on him. Whereas my four-year-old cat, she's independent, I don't have to worry about her. So are they easy to care for? No. It's like having a two-month-old kitten for 15 years. They are not easy to care for, they need a lot of attention, should have them in pairs or more. If you have one, they can do okay, but it's not recommended and you have to give them tons of time. It's best to have two or more, and very simple answer is no, they're not easy pets. They're not like, you want an easy pet, go for a hamster or you know a rat or something like that. They're not easy pets at all. Have you experienced the dogs eating their bedding while, they're, while you're away? My dogs don't have bedding. Um, maybe you mean like uh, something you put in their cage, if you got them caged, if you put like a foam mat. My dog has eaten those foam mats. He doesn't go after any of my furniture, but he will kind of eat those. If you buy those dog foam mats to put in a carrier, he'll sometimes chew on those. Um, but he doesn't have any bedding like a, like a cage, like a hamster bedding or something. So I don't, don't know what you mean exactly by that, but if you mean like the foam mats, yeah, he's, he's ripped up a couple of those. Oh, I'm sorry, I've been not saying the names. Let me go back, I've only gone through a couple. Control KSRC just asked about the, asked about the dogs. J Devil G Amer, Gamer, DR Juicy Fruit asked about the ferrets. And the first question about the birds was by Jason Thors. Sorry about missing those as I was going. Next we got Sniper Cube asks, I just watched your videos on turtle, very informative. I have two common musk turtle hatchlings. You helped a lot, thanks. So not a question, just a nice little comment. Thank you for your kind comment. And that's awesome. Just uh, make sure you got UVB, make sure you got the dry basking area, although musks don't bask very much, and uh, just a big enough tank. You should be good. Awesome that you got a couple turtles there. Drill Team Nation asks, would you ever get an American toad? I've had some toads. My drink. I've had some toads in the past and some frogs. Um, I'm not exactly sure what you mean by American toad, like the bull, the bullfrogs or... Or an Ameri no, that's a frog, obviously, it's different. Um, I haven't really looked into those. I might one day, I just I really haven't looked into those. Bill Smith asks, any tips on a Stingray tank? Is the 200 gallon I have big enough, and what's the difficulty level? If you know anything about discus fish, Stingrays are similar in terms of the water quality has to be pristine. It has to be very, very good water quality, you need very good filtration. <coughs> Uh, 200 gallons should be big enough for certain species. It all depends on the species you get. Teacups are a falsity. There is no such thing as teacups. You'll see them sometimes sold as teacup stingrays where they supposedly don't get very big. It all depends on the species. And lots of species are called teacups. They're going to get big. They're just sold kind of like that for more sales. So make sure you find out the scientific name, look them up what you're getting, see the maximum size. Mini stingrays could fit in a 200 gallon. You can maybe have two or three, maybe even four. Um, but make sure you really know exactly what species you're getting because some of them will outgrow that. Kyle Lackner asks, does an adult bearded dragon require a cave or hide? My dragon, I've never really given a 
cave or hide or hide. If you have a big enough cage, like 200 gallon or something, sure, give them a give them a little cave. See if he uses it. But um, not really. I've never seen a bearded dragon really needing that rocks and logs and such for them to sit on top of. Um, but I've never really given them that. I've never seen a need for it. But if you have a big enough cage, I'd say go ahead and give it a try. And if he goes in there, let us know. Maybe that is something we should be giving them if yours uses it. But um, as far as I know, no one really does that. Smiley Face, that's his name, asks, um, I have some hedgehog questions that need to be answered now. So can, get, can you give me your email so I can contact you? I actually responded in text. And I said you can send me a message on YouTube or Facebook. I'm Blaze asks, I have two reefs turtle and I'm about to get a 500 liter tank. What would be the best way to heat the tank and can I put fish with my turtles? You need a good heater. I actually responded, not realizing I was responding on this video. I responded in text. Fluval E-Series heaters are great. Um, there's a 200 and a 300 model, 200 or 300 watts. Uh, you might need two of them. Lots of people do this anyways. Then if one fails, the other one will keep the tank from dying and getting too cold. Um, but put one on either side of the tank. But I really recommend the Fluval E-Series. They're also covered, so they're protected from being broken by a turtle. Um, fish, there are certain fish that can go with turtles, but lots of the time the turtles are going to nip them. It's more recommended if you've got a humongous tank or an outdoor pond, maybe some kois or something like that, but um, the turtle will nip a lot of fish, so it's, it's hard for me to recommend uh, certain ones, but kois um, definitely do good if it's like an outdoor pond. Raina White asks, I got a hedgehog quite a while ago, and I've seen all your videos on hedgehogs, but I can't seem to put him in a spot where I can get his nails cut. He's an aggressive hedgehog with people, and he doesn't know. He's aggressive with people he doesn't know, so I can't really have someone help me. Any suggestions? By the way, I think you're awesome. Well, thank you. Um, but as for the hedgehog, it can be hard if they're not so, um, you know, they're pretty aggressive, like you said. Best you can do is try to go really slow, but if he's really aggressive, you just might have to give it some time. Keep holding him, keep trying to get him calm, and maybe in a month you'll be able to do it easier. He's not going to die from his nails overgrowing a little bit, and if they get too crazy, you know, do try, but it is a hard thing to do. Use gloves for sure, so it's a little easier, so you're not getting poked and everything. Put him in a towel, use gloves, but there's not all that much you can do. It's not like a dog that you can hold down and restrict in a certain way. Hedgehogs curl up, so I, I know it is hard if the hedgehog is... I mean, hey, that's my curtain blind thingy. So um, it's, it is really hard, and it's hard for me to even get suggestions, because if they are crazy and just like to curl up into a ball, it makes it pretty darn hard to cut their nails. Um, it's just you got to keep working with them, and hopefully as it gets more tame, it'll get easier. Rhino White has another question. Also, I have another question. I got a new dog in the end of September, and we have tile floors. I've noticed sometimes she tries to eat the grout out of the tiles. Should I be concerned? I would definitely correct her from that. Um, it can't be good for her to eat. I doubt she's going to get enough of it at a time to cause any major damage. But, yeah, I would, like, you know, say no every time you see her doing it and stop her from doing it. Hopefully she'll stop. Um, but yeah, I wouldn't worry too much. I mean, unless she's like looking at all the grout in one day. I mean, then that would be really bad. But um, I would definitely correct her. Say no. You know, stop her from doing it when she's doing it. Furry friends, so thanks for answering. I must have answered a question on the last one. No problem. Jasmine Nito asks, how many pets do you have? I don't know the exact number. I've had more in the past, and then I have a little less, and then I get more again. So it's, it's always kind of changing, but, you know... If you include all my fish individually, too, I mean, I got dozens, but I don't know an exact number. Sam Grubber asks, Hi, I'm looking for looking to buy a new hedgehog from someone, and I have a few questions because, I, because you seem very experienced. I was wondering if you start to pet a hedgehog, does it hurt your hand? I know you feel pricks, but does it really hurt? I was also wondering where you could find a hedgehog to buy. And lastly, I have a 13-year-old son, and he and I are going to share the work. I was wondering, minus... The work is it a good pet to pet? Okay, hedgehogs aren't really all snuggly. Yes, you can pet them, and when your hedgehog gets calm and tame around you, they'll keep their spikes backwards or their quills backwards. So you can pet them from front to back, and it doesn't hurt at all. When their spikes are out and they're in a ball and they're like hissing and puffing, I've never had the spikes cause any bleeding on my hands or skin. 
but it does kind of hurt a little prickly depending on how angry and jumpy they are. So it's, you know, it's, it can spike a little bit, but once your hedgehog's nice and tame and they're not just going in the ball and hissing, then you can pet them from front to back, but they're not a, for, they're not a snuggling pet really. I mean, they'll sit with you for a second, but they're more, they're not really a pet that sits there to snuggle and, and hold like that. But you should take them out daily and interact with them. It's just they're not a pet to pet, as you say. Hey, get off my blinds. Colin Robinson asks, I have two guinea pigs that make a mess out of their cage quite fast. Do you know of any cages or styles of cleaning that will make it easier to clean their cage? Yeah, they can throw stuff around and you don't want the wire grate on the ground, that's not good. You want to have them on a flat ground. My mom actually had a friend when I was little that had a guinea pig. And they had an awesome cage for it. You could probably build it pretty simple actually, out of like plexiglass or something. Even wood, but then you wouldn't be able to see it from outside. Hey, get off my shoe. And what it was was though, two feet tall walls about, and it was a square, so two feet walls all the way around, and then a flat bottom, and it was spaced out just like a square, like two or three feet wide. So it was just like a square with like two feet tall walls, no top. And that way the, head, the guinea pigs could go run around everywhere in there, and they couldn't throw the bedding so high. And it was really easy to clean out. You just take out the uh, guinea pig or two, take out the, you know, the water dish, the food dish, and then you just take this thing. It's only plexiglass. It doesn't weigh that much. You just dump it into your outdoor garbage and then refill it with some aspen bedding or whatever you're using. So maybe it's a style cage like that. The taller walls on the cage are going to help. So if you can find a cage or build a cage with taller walls, it's going to make a big difference. Let's see. Horatio Brasino, Dear Earthlings, my hedgehog doesn't stop scratching at his cage at night. What do I do? Um, I never really noticed mine doing that. Maybe he doesn't have enough things to do. Does he have a wheel? Make sure you have a wheel so he has some way to get his energy out. Maybe the cage is too small for him. I don't know how big your cage is, but maybe it's too small and he's like trying to get out because he doesn't feel like he has enough room. So look at your cage size. Maybe you need to get a bigger cage and make sure you got a wheel in there. Green Gobi asks, Hey, really nice video. I'm wondering what saltwater fish I should get next. I have a 90 gallon. I have a yellow tang, a yellow eye coal tang, a flame angel. We're also considering a hawkfish, but I do not know what other fish. There's a lot of other cool fish. There's some cool butterfly fish. There's some cool um, gobies. Um, I had so many other fish in the past, and it's hard for me to just come up with them right now. What I would suggest you do, you don't have to order from the site. I have no affiliation with them, but liveaquaria.com. If you go there and click on marine fish, you'll be able to search through all the fish they have for sale, and they got tons. And you'll be able to look through all the different types of marine fish. It'll tell their temperaments. It'll tell, you can go to a Stop attacking my shoe. You can go to a uh, compatibility chart which will help you know which fish can go together and which can't. And um, it's really easy to look through. I'm not saying you have to buy them from that site, but you can go look and see what other fish are there. But there's tons of saltwater fish. They're awesome. I mean, you can put clowns. There's tons of different types of clowns. Um, there's dart fish. There's fire fish. Cardinals. There's so many, it's, it's almost impossible to keep naming them all. Make sure you also get some cool inverts. Now, sure, I would stay away from them. They're probably going to get eaten in most any tank. But you can get some really cool um, snails. You can get some. Uh, you can get a hermit crab. You got to be careful. They can get big enough to eat some fish sometimes if you got small fish. But yeah, I definitely recommend going to liveaquaria.com and just look through their marine fish, and you can see tons and uh, get some information. Okay, I feel bad here. This one's name is cut off. It's because it printed a new page. So if, whoever this is, I'm sorry. Like it's got your question. I have a dog that gets very uptight around other dogs. How do I get my dog used to other dogs without hurting the other dogs? And a lot of socialization. Find people and dogs that you can get your dog around that you hope you know that you know about. Take them to a puppy class if you have to. There's, a, there's puppy classes all around every town. But a lot of socialization needs to be around other dogs and he'll get used to it in time. I'd really recommend going to a puppy class. That's, you can't really do it on your own at home with one dog. He needs to be out there and getting around other dogs even though you're scared of him being around other dogs. So I'd really, really recommend paying for a puppy class and going and doing some of those. Chelsea Gunners asks, how bad is a ferret smell? It depends. Some smell more than others, but as long as you keep the cage and the litter box clean, it's really not that bad. Sha Shannon Redmayne, I have a lovebird and I have one problem. She is yelling at me whenever I walk into the door from work. How do I get her to stop screaming? <laughs> That's a problem with every bird. and 
basically, it sucks, kind of, but you can't really control birds and when they talk. It just, if you find out how to from anyone else, let me know. <laughs> but birds are annoying as hell. They really are. I have two. I love them. But at the same time, they can be annoying. They will squawk, squawk, squawk whenever they want. It might be an hour a day. It might be ten hours a day. It might be five hours a night. Although birds usually sleep all night once the lights are off. Um, really, that's... I don't have an answer for that. I wish I did because I've had birds all my life. And as far as I know, there's almost no way to stop them from yelling when they want to. You, Pablo, thanks for your response. I must have answered on last week's video, so no problem. Kai Ray, would you recommend under the tank heat or above the tank heat for my ball royal pythons? What did I use when I had pythons? I forget what I used when I had pythons, but you know, I have a video. I, a, a past girlfriend of mine had a, a royal python, and we did the cage setup and everything, and I got a video of it. Um, Hopefully I talk about heating in that video, I'm not 100% sure, but check my channel, search my channel for Royal Python. You should find a video and hopefully I talked about heating in there. For most snakes I do under the tank heating, so that would probably be my recommendation for all my other snakes. That's what I use as a, a heat pad with a thermostat that keeps it controlled. Okay, looks like I got another one where the name might be cut off because I, oh no, here it is. Joe Contras asks, what filter should I get for my 60 gallon turtle tank? I really recommend fluval filters. A uh, 60 gallon, you're going to have at least 40 gallons in there because it's not going to be full all the way to the top. So let's say you have 40, 50 gallons. I'd really recommend probably a fluval U4. Great filters, do really good work. Um, check out the fluval U4. Should be good. All right. Super Bro, Super Bro, Bro Tech. Thank you for answering lots of my, lots of my, and I watched all your hedgehog vids before I got my ing. I had my ing for nine months now, so thanks a lot, bro. I don't know. It, seriously, it says my space ing. I've had my ing for must be like a typo, something. But he wrote another comment above it. Any tips for my hedgehog? He's squirmy hedgehog when it comes to water, but if I leave him, he goes nuts in the water and gets his nose and ears gets it in his nose and ears, is this okay? Some people think it's bad to get water in hedgehog's nose and ears. I've never had a problem myself, but if he doesn't like water, don't just leave him in the water and let him thrash around, you know? Give him a calmer bath where you, like, brush him off in the shallow water, and you don't have to make them swim or make them in water. They don't have to, you know, go in water if they don't like it especially. So, when they're baby, you give them a few baths, and if they don't like water at all, then put them in a little bit of water and just wipe them off. Uh, Alex... Sue Tursik has two questions here. I got a yellow belly slider a couple weeks ago and she has red stuff on her shell and there's some black stuff. Do you know what I should do? I'd have to see a picture of it. Usually when a shell starts going bad from like lack of UVB and stuff it gets like brittle and it usually turns like a more of a white color. Um, this could be some type of disease but I don't know. I'd have to see a picture and then maybe have to look that up a little more. Hey, get away from there. Should I take my turn to the vet? The question is down one more. And he's got another one after that. Hi, that's a question down below, but I have another question. My turtle just started to try and bite me. Should I be worried? And there's stuff on her shell. I think it's her shell rot. What should I do if it's shell rot? Well, I just talk shell rots often. Well, depends. Shell rot's different than lack of UVB. But yeah, you should take it to the vet if you're really worried. I can't really diagnose anything anyways, but I, especially not without a picture or some type of video or a picture like that. So take it to the vet if you're worried. As for it biting you, I've never had a turtle bite me. I don't take my turtles out very often. I don't consider a turtle, an aquatic turtle, a pet to really play with out of the tank very much. So I haven't taken them right out much, but when I do, they've never bit me. So, um, you know, I would take it to the vet if you think it's sick, and then I'd give it some time alone in its tank to get used to its environment. And then if you want to start trying to take it out in a week or two, go ahead once you know if it's sick or not. Jamie Cavana, hey, which is the best reptile like as in lizard or turtle? There's really no best animal of any type because all animals are different, they all act different, they all have different, you know, ways of life, so it depends on what you want as a pet. If you want a pet that's like this or like that or like this or like that, 
you should get the one you want. You shouldn't just like get one that someone else says is the best because everyone's going to say the best is something different. Um, I do really like bearded dragons because they're daytime lizards. Lots of other lizards are nocturnal, like leopard geckos, crested geckos, and so on. So bearded dragons are more awake during the day and they're more active during the day. And I like that because you see them more moving around. Um, Papa, New York City. Thanks for answering my previous question. No, no, no problem, man. Uh, very informative for a starter. I have another question. Can I have two cats and a few ferrets at home together? and even get them to play with each other when I need to separate them? The answer is yes and no. Yes, you definitely can. Tons of people do this. Tons of people have cats and ferrets together. It's just fine. My cat and ferret, no problem. But it all depends on the ferret's temperaments, the cat's temperaments, when they're introduced, how old they all are, blah, 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 blah. So yes, it's very, very, very possible. Could there be a problem though? Yes, there could be a problem. It could end up bad also. So it's hard to give a definitive answer on that, but yes, it's, it's very possible. Luke Almquist, can you do a video showing all of your animals? I've done some in the past, I might try to do something like that in the future. Jaden Dabrowski, I have one question. Do you have any, any info on STOs? I'm thinking of getting a pet rodent or marsupial, and I haven't done any research on them. Guinea pig or STO? Guinea pig and STOs are completely different, so you've got to decide what type of pet you want. I have videos on my channel of, of short-tailed opossums. Um, go to my channel, click on the search button, and type in opossum, or type in STO, and it should bring up lots of videos. Banana Joe, are your, your snakes still alive? Yeah, I got a few snakes. I was actually going to hopefully do a feeding video soon. Um, yeah, I still have, I got the Bolophile Reptile Rack. That's an awesome rack. I've done a review on that. You can probably search my channel for that if you want to see that awesome reptile rack. Had it for years now and it's really good. Um, and we got a few snakes in there still. Pet Planet 02. How do you make time for all the pets you have? You have so many and from what you say I assume you take good care of them and you definitely know what you're talking about. You know it's not that hard. I I just it's it's not that hard for me. I don't know what people ask me that question all the time. How, how do you do this? How, it's To me it doesn't seem hard. I feed my cat and dog in the morning and now I got two cats and feed them at night and then you know the cats are inside take the dog out during the day hedgehogs pick up you know here and there the reptiles pick up here and there clean the uh, reptiles and turtles and birds once a week it's it's really not that hard it's, I don't know it's not too bad <laughs> Jake Reichet I have a veal chameleon do you, rec do you re recommend any auto mister I had an auto mister I forget what it was called it was on, I think, my Crested Gecko video, and you can get it on TurtleSale.com for like 30 bucks. I've seen it for like 80 bucks in stores. You get it way cheaper on this website. But yeah, you, a mister would be fine, if it's, especially if it's one that you could set like a, a timer and everything, not just a continuous mist. Um, but yeah, you can get a mister, and I, I just can't remember the brand name of this one. If I, if I do remember it, I'll send you a, a message or respond to your comment. Dusty Hard Money. When I am away for a trip for more than two days but less than one week, my dark bearded dragon will not eat for any one of any one of my friends. When I get back and feed him, he will eat again like normal. That's not really normal. He asks, is it normal or, or, or is that weird? It's not really normal. I'm kind of amazed. I'm not sure what you're feeding him, but usually dragons really go after insects. So, I mean, if, if he's a... It's an adult bearded dragon, so maybe they're trying to feed him veggies and he's just not eating them. I'd, I'd say try the foods that he really goes after the most when you're out of town. Feed him insects when you're out of town so he at least eats something. Hopefully he'll go after those, because usually when I throw in any type of insects, my bearded dragon goes crazy and he wants to eat them fast. But it shouldn't be a problem for two, three days. He's not going to, you know, not going to die in two, three days, I'm sure, in the wild. Bearded dragons, I'm sure, go a day or two or three sometimes without food, so... He'll be fine for a couple days. I'd be worried if it was longer than that, though. But yeah, try next time his favorite foods, his favorite insects when you're out of town. Forge Mentuka. What are some veggies or fruits I can feed in my red-eared slider? He's about five inches long. For now, you can mostly just stick to pellets and some fish. Um, I ha I'm going to go on, go up and check some of the stuff I've looked at in the past and maybe done in the past and send you a, a list. Because right now I don't want to give some wrong information just because I'm talking off my head. 
So um, I'll try to send you a few uh, options there after this video when I get back on my computer. And the last question here, this project has not been cancelled. Sorry if someone asked this, I haven't really watched your pet answer videos. Why did you pick the name Earthling? Um, why did I? I'm, I picked that name back when I was like, I don't know, like 17, 15, maybe before that. I think it had something to do with I was watching some TV show, and there was like, I forget the name of the show right now or what it exactly was, but I think I was watching some TV show earlier in the day or a movie about aliens or something, and I had to make up a name, and this wasn't even for YouTube, this was like for some other thing like years before, and I had to make up a name, and it just, Earthling came to mind, and ever since then, that's been what it was, and it fit really well because I take care of pets, so, uh, you know, it fit really well into that. But I think it was something like that. I think it's just kind of, I had like an alien and earth thing on my mind the time I had to make up this screen name like years ago. And it just stuck forever. So that was Pet Answers 8, I believe. Sorry it took me longer. It's the holiday seasons. My birthday was a couple weeks ago. A lot's been going on, so busy times. Just try to get the next one out sooner, hopefully at the very beginning of uh, 2016. If you're new to these, I should have said this in the beginning, but if you're new to these and you're watching the end of the video here, I answer your questions live on camera every couple weeks or so, depending on how quick I get to it. So all you got to do is leave a comment on this video, and in Earthlings com uh, Pet Answers number 9, the one after this, I will answer it on camera. So, have any questions, let me know in the comments. Other than that, it's uh, holiday time and almost New Year's, so happy holidays, happy New Year's to anyone that uh, I don't see before then online. And happy pet keeping and happy flying. Lots of stuff on my channel. So I'm going to grab Mr. Dread here, bring him up my camera. I'm trying to get away from me because I was grabbing him. And then we'll say bye-bye. Say bye-bye.